James, coolest. Where are we? Where are we? All right, we are in Long Beach, California. I'm staying at the Renaissance. No two reviews are alike. Well, at least I try to make it that way. I'm already in my room. I uh, got here a little early. I'm working this week. This Renaissance is right across the street from the convention center in Long Beach. So there's really two reasons a lot of people visit Long Beach. So one is the convention center. They have a lot of staple shows here in Long Beach. And uh, number two is Long Beach Grand Prix. It's one of the coolest Grand Prix in America. A lot of fun. Uh, any Grand Prix is a great time, especially the one in Long Beach. There is an airport in Long Beach. Uh, so if you're passing through, you might find yourself here. But Long Beach is a very, very industrial city. It has been for a long time. So again, a lot of conferences and a lot of commerce. You have to go to the club. There's a club level at this Renaissance. It is on floor number 11. I'm staying on floor number 11. Uh, they usually put their preferred members on the same floor. There's the club. It's kind of a status hierarchy thing. I always like it when they do that. That way it's an easy stroll to the club. So I'm gonna check that out here in a second. They also do have a pool and fitness on level three. We're going to do that. So I've stayed here before. Uh, the lobby is really, really beautiful. We're gonna go check that out as well. They have one of my favorite drinks. It's called an Orange Crush. Well, I walked in and I peeped at the menu. Uh, it immediately recollected and I'm looking forward to having one of those. So let's quickly go over this room. It's pretty standard. You know, a Renaissance is like, uh, it's like a Marriott, it's a full service hotel, so you're going to have a restaurant, you're going to have dry cleaning, you're gonna have full service. It's like a four, four and a half star hotel, depending on which ones you stay at. I stayed at what I feel like then some five star renaissance, and I stayed at some lower end four star renaissance, but you're gonna get that full service Marriott uh, experience. So the, this room right here is pretty standard for a renaissance. Um, I feel like we always start in the bathroom, so let's start here in the living areas. This chair here, I've already tried to sit down on it. It is absolutely uncomfortable. But what I think I'm going to do is hang out here and then have some dinner. It's very, very convenient because you can put your dinner right here and then watch your TV. So if you wanna have your laptop right here, or if you wanna have your food right here and then chill, watch some TV, just hang out. So here's the desk working area. Uh, it is really elongated, I like that, so you can lay out your peripherals or your work stuff. Uh, only one plug-in, one outlet, and then one five watt slow charging USB. So you might need to bring uh, one of those separate USB chargers that have multiple ports if you're looking to plug in multiple stuff because you just have one outlet here, and there is one more down there. So that's the desk. This chair actually is a good chair for getting work done. When you get work done, you wanna have a chair that's comfortable yet uncomfortable because you don't wanna be too comfortable doing work because when you're too comfortable doing work, well, I don't know, it's just, it's too comfortable. And then you just kind of settle in and kind of cozy up and all of a sudden you're not working, you're watching TV or, or doing something else. So this chair is actually pretty perfect. I like this chair, rocks back, it's pretty cool. This bed is super comfortable. Took a nap on it already, I cheated. You could see where my work was, right, right in the middle there. But I tried to keep it pristine. Uh, really, really comfortable. One thing about Renaissance is that they boast and brag about their bedding and their towels and stuff like that, and they should. They are some of the most comfortable beds that I have been in, and if you really, really enjoy them, you can actually buy them. Now, I don't know anyone who's ever done that, but if you thoroughly enjoy this bed setup, you can, uh, you can buy it. You can buy everything from the sheets to the actual box spring. This is a box spring mattress to the pillows to the linen. All right, let's quickly move over here. You got your coffee in the morning. Uh, a nice little footprint. The Keurig ones have gotten a little larger. This is not a Keurig. This is an Urbanista, I believe. Okay, so you have an Urbanista coffee set up right here. Uh, television, okay. This TV does articulate, which I like. You have a refrigerator down here. No mini bar, but that's actually fine by me. I actually like it when there's no mini bar uh, because if you're at a full service hotel, uh, you can always order your drinks through room service or always go down to the bar or order something late at night. So if there's no mini bar, that's always fine by me. And in fact, I like the extra storage because you know on this channel, I love to eat, all right? My only really hang up with this room is that it is a little dim. I sound like an old man complaining when I talk about the lighting. The lighting is a little dim. Again, no ceiling lighting. The one thing that, God, the fucking lighting in here. See, the lighting in here is awful. The lighting, the lighting in here is awful but whatever, I'm not talking about lighting again. The room service menu is online. And when I say online, it is on the TV. 
And one might contend and say, James, that's the way things are going. Everything is digital. They're being green to not printing menu menus anymore. And I'd say, yes, I concur. That is correct. But here's the thing. What if you're watching Monday Night Football or you're watching a sitcom or you're watching your favorite show and it's a prime moment? Not like weird sledgehammer guy right now, but let's say it's the fourth quarter or it is the part of the drama that you tuned in the entire episode for, but you're super hungry. What you have to do here is click out of your TV, completely click out of your program. Okay, hit that button twice now. It's a, it's a little laggy. Go to hotel services, go to dining, and then scroll through the menu one by one. Menu page one, menu page two, menu page three, right? I mean, for me, when I'm in a hotel room, I like to be comfortable. I like to be on the bed, all right? And this bed is super comfortable, by the way. Um, you know, I like to be on the bed, have my room service menu in front of me while I'm watching TV. I don't want to have to click through the television while I am ordering my room service. It seems like a menial and minuscule complaint, but I found it to be very, very, I don't know, obtrusive? I found it to be very, very annoying. So that's really my only gripe. Let's quickly move on uh, to the bathroom. So there's a full length mirror here. I like that, uh, especially since we're across the street from the convention center. You wanna make sure you're looking professional and proper. Check yourself out in the morning. Love full length mirrors. You'd think they'd be standard in all hotels, but as we have seen, they are not. They do have one robe in here, just one. So you can tell this is a business hotel and there's only one. All right, it's black, it's pretty cool. All right, so let's walk into this bathroom. A beautiful elongated mirror. Isn't full length, but you can still check yourself out. I really, really like it. I love the exterior trimmed recess lighting. It makes for great light. I always like Renaissance towels, by the way. Check these out. They're quilted. Uh, they have a little like cross design on them. I've always enjoyed these. They're a little thin, but these are some of my favorite towels. We'll put that back. We have Aveda or Aveda products. Ladies, tell me uh, which way to say it. Is it Aveda or Aveda? I'm not sure. I know there's an Aveda or Aveda Institute in Minnesota where I have lived and I'm from, but I'm not sure how to say the name. So someone tell me how to, how to pronounce that. I like this backdrop right here. This is probably the coolest thing about this bathroom is just this little accent wall. I like it. It's a great combination of colors. These colors are very appealing to me. And I don't know, I just, I like it. It's pretty cool. Full bath, which is cool. If you want to sit down and relax, I'll probably partake in that. That's a room tour. We have to go check out the pool and the fitness, which is on level three. We gotta go check out the club, which is on this level, uh, floor number 11. And then we have to go down to the bar, at least for one drink at some point and get an orange crush. I just remember that drink being awesome. So until then, I'm gonna order some room service. Uh, I'm gonna order, you know how I do it. We're probably gonna do a couple different dishes. We're gonna explore the menu. I'll check in in a little bit and do that. And then we're gonna get to the rest of the hotel room. So until then, I'm out. All right, all right. Room service is here. It came in about, I'd say, at 20, 25 minutes. Not too bad, considering I ordered three plates. Here is the ahi, pokey. Here is the Angus burger, all right. And then here is the hummus. All right, my favorite was the edamame hummus. Okay, this was absolutely delectable. I've never had edamame and hummus before. I've recently become a hummus fan, but I've always liked edamame and uh, the combination of the two flavor profiles were amazing. This is my favorite dish. So this was awesome. This pita bread, by the way, it's like semi-firm and semi-foldable. Now, they could be playing a trick on me. This could be two days old because that's the texture. It's like a two day old pita bread. I'm not sure if it's a specific kind or if it's really old, but it's awesome. Um, sometimes the pita bread is a little too soft and flimsy and you can't scoop. This is like perfect where it still has some softness. I'm trying to do this. Where it still has some softness and some fullness, but it's also firm enough to hold it up. By far, number one. Okay. Well, let me move over here. This burger, so you can see what I did. I stacked the two on top of each other and then just made a monstrosity. I mean, look at that. The burger could have been number one. Actually, I'm gonna take that back. The burger is a close finish to the hummus. If it was cooked perfectly, because they asked me how it's cooked and I said medium, to me, that's not a medium. To me, that, that, that's, a, that's a medium well or even a well done. It's still close to the hummus, 
Um, it would have been even a little closer if they would have cooked it perfectly. The burger is really good. I give it definitely a recommendation. This hummus is a definite. This is a recommend. The burger is really good. The fries are not. They're soggy. Uh, they're not that flavorful. They came in a little. The fries are not. Um, they came in a little soggy and cold and are not that flavorful. This over here, this ahi tuna, it didn't pass. And I and I love ahi. I mean, you can go check out my um, my pokey video. All right, and it looks beautiful. Just look at the way that the, the, those colors contrast. It's absolutely a beautiful dish. These wontons are, you know, wonton chips are wonton chips. There's nothing special. There's nothing bad. They're just whatever. But um, it was saturated with soy and salt and the oversaturation of soy and salt really just eroded any type of flavor that came naturally from the ahi. So number one, the definite is this edamame hummus. You will not go wrong, you will thank me. Number two, the burger. Really good, I recommend it. I wish they would have, wish they would have cooked it perfectly. It would have made it even that much better. Still really, really good, I recommend it. And then the way that this ahi pokey is prepared, the oversaturation of soy and salt, uh, I can't, I can't recommend it. Um, I'm definitely not gonna finish it because my face will go round and uh, we can't have that, all right? So uh, I'm gonna finish my meal, I'm gonna relax a little bit and then we're gonna hit the gym. All right, sitting up here on my perch. This is probably one of the most comfortable spots in the room. It's kind of cool just sitting up here. I'm not really sure what this was intended to be. It's kind of a precarious position, but I like it. All right, uh, update, trip update. I'm exhausted, permanently exhausted. I tried to sleep and, and couldn't fall asleep. I'm so tired, but yet I can't fall asleep. And uh, I've, I've accepted the fact that my circadian rhythm, my, my sleep clock, may permanently be messed up. Um, and if not permanently, at least it is for the midterm, uh, for the foreseeable future. And listen, I'm not complaining about it. That is one of the trade-offs. Uh, that's one of the sacrifices that you commit to when you travel. And I've, I've taken this path in my life on my own volition. Uh, there are trade-offs and sacrifices that you must commit to when you decide to live a life of travel. And uh, I'll talk about those a little bit. I haven't decided if I'm going to start another channel and do a vlog and kind of talk about some of the benefits and detriments of traveling and living on the road, or if I'm going to embed them in these videos. Um, I need to. I want to think about that. My channel is still really, really small, so I don't have to think about it right now. But um, anyway, long story short, it's about 10, 10.30 at night. And uh, I have to work in the morning, but I can't sleep. So probably an opportune time to go hit the gym, uh, perhaps work it up a sweat and, and uh, getting the blood moving will make me a little bit more fatigued. And uh, hopefully we can check out the gym as well. So that's on the agenda for tonight. I can probably do a walkthrough of the 11th floor club. Um, I peeped in there, it looks pretty cool. So I'm gonna give you guys a quick tour of that. And then tomorrow we're gonna have to check off our last box at least for this hotel i'm going to give you a quick purview of the lobby walk you through there and we have to get an orange crush what we call it an orange crush orange whatever drink that is whatever orange drink that is we have to get uh, I, I don't remember the name um orangeicle creamsicle i'm not sure what it is anyway the orange creamy drink i remember from when i was here two years ago it is exceptional we have to get one of those i've mentioned it too many times already so it's time to go get one we'll do that tomorrow uh, but right now i'm off to the gym and let's go check it out right, let's go Great workout check out this gym this is a top five gym i've been to all year for sure it's great how this year continues to progress we're getting close to the end of it and yet i'm finding better and better gyms in each hotel it's awesome so uh real quick we have two pelotons one lifetime they look like they're from the same manufacturer they almost look almost identical but they're not so two Pelotons, which is very cool. Those are expensive machines. One lifetime bike, which I used. It was awesome. Uh, we have a row machine. We have an ab. Diversity of weights, which is really cool. All the way from three up to 65, which is a great variance. Um, a real diverse uh, scaling of weights, which is cool. Two benches. I'm gonna get to that in a second. What is that? Is that a mirror? Is that a room? What is this? All right, I'm gonna go in here in a second. I've never seen that before. That is really cool. Shoulder press cable machine right here, the pull-up bar. Have some CrossFit stuff over here, which is really cool. A huge CrossFit uh, system right here. Full-length mirrors, what's up? Uh, this is really, really cool. If you wanna do some yoga, CrossFit, whatever. Um, a huge open area. And then they really compacted a lot of cardio equipment into here. 
It's really, really close. You're gonna to get to know your neighbor in here very, very quickly, but you have three conventional treadmills, one concave, and then a stair stepper, and then an elliptical, basically uh, two different variants of an elliptical machine, and then a traditional stair step machine. So look at all this cardio equipment they plugged in to this very, very small area. I like it. I mean, why space it out? If you wanna put in expensive equipment next to each other, be my guest, and I really like the variants of it. A lot of diversity, so treadmills. And then look at this, you got some yoga mats over there. And then check this out over here. What is this? A private workout room? So if, I'm not really sure what this is about, but this is so cool. So if somebody wants some privacy, or maybe you can do some personal training in here, this was on. So this is a touch TV with different programs in here. Uh, 30 minutes, 20 minutes, you can do some gentle yoga medicine ball circuit, and then look how cool this is. This is touch, uh, TKO basic, play class, accept. This is really cool. And then of course you have your Pilates yoga equipment in here. You got your, uh, your medicine balls and then your stabilizing balls and then your rods and things like that. But this is so cool where if you are a beginner, or if you are typically females like to have the privacy in the gym because guys can be weirdos. It's the truth, guys can be weirdos in the gym. Um, or for whatever reason, you wanna come in here and get a personal fitness session. This is really, really cool. And I like the fact where you still, I can feel the air conditioning. It's not sectioned off where it's glass or a door and it's steamy and it's muggy. This is really, really cool. These beads are a great idea. I mean, I'd like to incorporate that into a design of a, of a house or, or even business someday. This is a really cool design. I've never seen it before. It's opaque, but yet still private. It's, it's fun to walk through. <laughs> it's like a human doggy door. Anyway, um, had a great workout. This gym is really, really cool. Hopefully I can make it into the club lounge. It's about midnight. It's actually 12.23. So it's 12.23. I'm gonna try to make it into the club lounge real quick, give you guys a quick tour and then hopefully try to get some sleep. So let's get out of this beautiful gym. This gym, if you're a gym goer and you wanna stay somewhere in Long Beach and you don't wanna to have to pay for a gym membership but you want a decent gym, in terms of hotel gyms, this is, uh, this, is, this is recommended, this is awesome. Okay, let's try to hit the lounge real quick. Let's try to get some sleep, we got a big day tomorrow. All right guys and gals, very, very quick tour. This is the club lounge at the Renaissance. This place was pitch black, but my key card worked. All right, so my key card worked, I came in here, I turned on all the lights. Um, I'm not sure how much time I have in here if I'm even allowed in here at this time, but my key card works. So let's, let's go through this. So I have breakfast here, I believe from 6.30 to 9.30 and then hors d'oeuvres from like four to seven and then dessert from seven to 10. So in between those off hours, you can just come in here. There's a TV, as you can see, it's off right now. There's a couch right here. Um, again, you have to be of certain status to get in this lounge. I'm not sure what that status is. It's like Delta, they do silver, gold, platinum, and an ambassador. I think you need to be at least gold to be able to get in here. Um, and you may ask yourself, well, if there's no breakfast and no hors d'oeuvres and no dessert, why come in here? Well, you have a nice Starbucks machine right here. These are so cool. I wish I had one of these in my house, um, even though I'm trying to get off caffeine again. Uh, and then, you know, Sierra Mist, Pepsi, and then free waters in here. Like I said, that's one of my mantras of hotels. Never pay for water. You can find it somewhere. Don't ever go for the $5 boss. There are ways around that. Anyway, uh, so they have Starbucks, water, and then sometimes they have like chips and stuff out here, but they don't tonight. That's what I'm taking back to my room. So much for the caffeine. Okay, I'm quitting tomorrow, I swear. And then more stuff over here. So really set up for breakfast and hors d'oeuvres, then another TV. Um, it's a pretty nice lounge, as you can see. Uh, very clean, uh, looks newly remodeled. Everything in here seems fresh. Here's one really cool thing I wanna show you very quickly. I've never seen this before. It's not a multi-level lounge. This is really funny, by the way. The print is not feeling well. Judging by the AJ on this paper, it has not been feeling well for a while. But check this out. 12th floor, which is the top floor has access as well. So it's not a dual level lounge, but they have windows. Apparently this is still a lounge level. So a double lounge level uh, hotel, double lounge level hotel. All right, so anyway, it's been a long day. Uh, it's time to get to bed. Let me grab my essentials here. And we checked it off. So the only thing we have to do tomorrow is get that orange crush, orange Jewish, creamsicle,
Anyway, it's orange and it's creamy and it's delicious. You just have to go down to the hotel bar and get that and then we are done in terms of the Renaissance. I'm trying to do some pizza places tomorrow too, but that's gonna be in a separate episode. So anyway, I'm out tonight and I'll see you tomorrow. Day number two, need to get to work, get to head over to the convention center, which is right across the street. But before I do so, there's one thing I forgot to talk about. I've been talking about checking off boxes on the Renaissance, and I thought I only had one thing left, but there is one other thing I have left, and that's the pool. They have a pool here. Uh, when I checked in yesterday, it looked like they were doing uh, it looked like they were doing repairs on the hot tub, but the pool looked to be open. It's on the third level. It overlooks kind of the main drag and it actually faces the convention center, so I can show you what that looks like in case you care. And behind the convention center is the Pacific Ocean. Maybe you heard of it. That looks like it's taller than 12 floors, doesn't it? But it is truly only 12 floors tall. All right, and this is the pool area. As you can see, I said they're redoing the uh, they're redoing the hot tub. If you wanted to come out here today, you certainly could. It is beautiful. I'd say it's probably about 80 degrees. And uh, yeah, so there's the convention center as I talked about. That's why I'm here. This is a perfect location if you're coming to the convention center. It's right across the street. Uh, no need to Uber, park, or anything else. It's a perfect location. There's the main drag down there. This is Long Beach, right? And again, here's the pool area. Um, you know, it looks like Obviously right now there isn't really any service out here, but they did have these cabanas numbered. They did have these cabanas numbered. Let's see what's posted over here. Is this a, is this a menu? No, it's not. It looks like it's probably just the rules. No, it is the menu. So it looks to be the same room service menu that we had last night. There's the edamame hummus that we did. There's the ahi pokey, and of course, there is the Renaissance burger. We got some towels out here, and these guys are working hard to get that hot tub back in action, which would be pretty cool to be in around December, January, or February. It doesn't get that cold in uh, Southern California, 60, 65 degrees, but that's perfect hot tub weather. Come out here if you wanted to. It's just 10.30 in the morning, and I believe this to be predominantly a business hotel and a business city. It's not really a tourist destination, nor a tourist hotel, but if you want to come out here, I mean, it's almost October, you certainly could. So anyway, I, I gotta go over there, but we'll come back here later. Found ourselves in the lobby. I'm at lunch right now, and I wanna give you just a quick rundown of what this lobby looks like. It is very beautiful, it's very trendy. Uh, very chic, very modern. This is where the Starbucks is. So I have a Starbucks on site. That's important to you. And as you can see, it leads directly out to street access, which is really cool. So here's what that looks like. All right, so there's your Starbucks. And as you can see, it leads right out to street access. Keeps the music playing, keeps it lively, keeps it fresh. I might use this as an opportunity to get that orange drink I've been talking about. I might get, I might get that real quick. I'm at lunch, no one's here, don't tell anyone. I like that eat sign, by the way. I should have that. That like exemplifies me. The place looks like, it's not that expensive, but it is beautiful. I love it when it's enclosed in glass like this. And then here is what the lobby looks like. It almost kind of has a W type feel to it with the real chic furniture, kind of eclectic, kind of eccentric. You have some weird little statues and art right here. Uh, I love the orange lampshades, and of course, this place is called Sip. Uh, I like the orange and the orange because we're about to have that orange crush. So, eat and sip. The branding is very simplistic, yet very effective. And here is the famous orange crush well famous at least to me i've been talking about it all video finally got one haven't tasted it yet but there it is absolute vanilla triple sec freshly squeezed orange juice S sounds real simplistic but i remember this drink being delicious in fact this is all i had when i was here uh, a couple years ago um, didn't have that many don't want it to come off like that but when i did have something this is what i had so let's uh let's see if my recollect is correct uh, update on the orange crush is that it's gone quickly because it's delicious absolute vanilla triple sec freshly squeezed orange juice i'll tell you what makes this drink it's the absolute vanilla coupled with the orange juice because it makes it taste exactly like a creamsicle it's so good and then of course for dessert we have the what is this this is the citrus mule 
So is this a take on a Moscow meal, perhaps? Let's see what we have here on the citrus meal. Citron, raspberries, lime juice, and ginger beer. All right, look at the presentation on that. Well layered. I like the fact how it has the uh, muddled raspberry in it. Let's, let's check it out. To me, to me, this is better than a traditional Moscow meal just because I like the flavors. I like berries and, and stuff like that. Uh, I'm not afraid to admit it. So this is really good. Um, it's a nice variant of a Moscow Mule. If you like a Moscow Mule, then this would be a good one for you to try. It definitely does have Moscow Mule pedigree to it. You can taste the ginger and stuff like that. So if you like it, but you also want something more refreshing and a bit fruity, this would be a great drink for you. <clears throat> All right, citrus meal, done. And uh, it was really good. Coming from the Orange Crush, it took a few minutes for my taste buds and taste profile to switch from something sweet to something a bit more bitter, um, at least in, in my uh, perception. But by the time I got halfway through, it's so good. And the presentation is absolutely beautiful. I love the muddled raspberries. So again, this is the citrus meal, citron, fresh raspberries, lime juice, and ginger beer. So. All right, final trip update up here, perched on my ledge. <laughs> like a honey badger just burrowing. Uh, I like it up here. So that's the lived in room. That's what it looks like. That is a taste of travel life. You see a couple pizza boxes there. Uh, we did a few episodes of Pizza Detective Slice of Life, Quest for the Best, go check those out. Uh, went to Milana's just now and I went to Broadway Pizza yesterday. So my time at the Renaissance has ended and I really, really like this hotel. I will say this, Long Beach is not a tourist destination. You do not want to stay here for fun. Um, I went to some great places, but it is not the best area in California. Uh, it has improved a lot, just like Oceanside, where I live over the years, it has gone through some gentrification or some regentrification, and it's great. And I think in the next five or 10 years, it could be, it has the potential to be Santa Monica-esque. All right, it has the potential to be Santa Monica-esque. But um, last night, walking home from the pub, um, I would have not walked home alone if I was a lady. Um, had a couple people try to harass and solicit and I had to get very loud and very demonstrative with one person and I would not wish that upon anybody. So this is not the place to come if you're a tourist and just looking to saunter and walk around California. Go to Santa Monica, go to Newport Beach, go to Huntington Beach, um, go to Hermosa, go to Redondo, go anywhere. Long Beach, if you're here, you're typically here for utilitarian purposes, like I said, typically commerce or craft. Uh, again, I'm here for the trade show, and this renaissance is great. It's right across the street. Uh, a lot of proximity to some great places from pizza to pints, all within blocks that are within walking distance. But there are a lot of transients, a lot of homeless, and a lot of beggars. Uh, it just isn't the best environment for people who are looking for solace, retreat, and, uh, and for comfort, right? So this renaissance is beautiful we checked off all the boxes and then some i uh, walked through the lobby you saw that uh, we went to the gym went to the pool uh, we also went to the lobby bar we had the orange crush we we, we, we did it all uh, the room is great and this is probably one of the better hotels that i've stayed at in long beach i haven't checked out the westin i'm sure that is probably pretty similar the Renaissance and the Westerns are almost identical in their brand statements and in their positioning within the Marriott ecosystem. And I also know there's a Hyatt Regency here as well. So I can't call this the best hotel in Long Beach, but what I can say is that it is one of the best. And if you're coming here for commerce and especially the convention at the convention center across the street, I think this is the closest one to it. It's literally right across the street. Can't see it from here, I'm looking for it. Uh, but it, it's literally right across the street. So no Ubering, um, no additional parking or driving. You just walk right to it. So I've enjoyed my time at Long Beach and now we're off. We got some fun stuff coming up. Like I said, we are off to LA. Uh, we are off to Toronto. We're off to Chicago. We're off to South Carolina. We are off to Miami. We're off to Orlando. We're off to Miami again. We are off to Minneapolis. We are off to Japan. We got some fun stuff coming up. And I really appreciate those who found the channel early uh, in its inception. Uh, basically what you've seen thus far has just been me making videos while I'm working. I uh, can't wait to do some proactive videos while on leisure. Uh, that's gonna be a ton of fun. Uh, I'm gonna have nine days in Miami upcoming sometime in the future. Not gonna say exactly uh, when I'm gonna be gone, but I'm gonna spend nine days in Miami staying at three exquisite spots. One is a super secret hotel within a hotel downtown, but you'll see that uh, upcoming here within the next, uh, I'd say, uh, four to six weeks. 
But until then, uh, we're gonna keep it here. We're gonna digress. This is the Renaissance Long Beach. And if you are in Long Beach, or if you happen to come to Long Beach, you cannot go wrong with the Renaissance. So I'm out, I'm off to the next one. I'm going back home to Oceanside and I will catch you on the flip side.